Hey, this is Al from Transformational Gaming. Appreciate you coming by. Appreciate you coming to the channel. Today, I would like to talk to you guys about my thoughts on Spider-Man and Sony bringing their games to PC. I haven't really talked about it. I talked about it a little bit, but I haven't really talked about it a lot. But before I get into it, I would like to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel. The channel has been growing and I am extremely impressed we are almost to 800 788 can you guys push me up to 800 <laughs> can y'all push the ouster to 800 subscribers man that would be definitely a immediate goal for the channel so yeah man let's just go ahead and take the bull by the horns and get it on up there pause to 800 subscribers I, I believe we can do it I believe we can do it also if you are a subscriber or you're not a subscriber feel free to come back if you like the content now that we got that out the way today I want to talk to you guys about my thoughts about spider-man and Sony putting their games on PC and look I'm just gonna say it like this I just think that's a very smart move by Sony and I know there has been a lot of fanboyism and bewilderment about why would Sony do something like that? Why would Sony put their games on, which is essentially the Xbox? <laughs> because I think all Microsoft games, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure mostly all of the Microsoft games are ran by DirectX which is the same API that is used for the Xbox hence the name DirectX so with all that being said I do think it's smart for Sony to have another stream of revenue because look folks <laughs> you know Sony I'm not saying Sony is broke but I'm saying that Sony is not cash rich they have access to cash through credit and we all know that even though and people who are in the know as far as finance is concerned everybody knows that credit is cheap credit is the cheapest asset you can have because again i'm not gonna make this an economic theory video but credit is essentially cheaper because you don't have to pay taxes on it and as you see taxes essentially going up for the conglomerates and the businesses i mean i think they got to pay like a uh, a, a rich tax or something like that I'm just making a point that even though financing is essentially cheap but at the end of the day you still got to pay those monthly payments and so that's kind of the conundrum Sony found themselves in especially with them trying to acquire all these companies and I'm gonna go into that on another video because I know there's a lot of rumors with Sony buying Squaresoft again Sony has to pay those monthly bills and they're very kind of cavalier when it comes to gaming they spend a lot on gaming they essentially especially for the third parties who make exclusive games for them they essentially hand those developers a blank check and Sony fully expects them to make the money back through publishing so that's why it's important for games like Death Stranding to be successful because they essentially gave people like Kojima a blank check they're not gonna release any numbers but I'm pretty sure they paid like tens of million if not hundreds of millions of dollars to finance that project and so now they're looking for money <laughs> you could just tell Death Stranding even though it probably sold about 10 million copies I'm pretty sure they wanted that game to be a lot bigger than what it was it kinda came and went you know when it came out for PC that was an attempt to <laughs> make that money back and so Sony is essentially been not shy about trying to make that money back I mean you can see with this ten dollar increase in games and now they doing the PC stuff and they trying to do the restructuring of the PSN so they can make even more money and they're just doing a lot of things that <laughs> it just screams hey look we need to raise more capital <laughs> so this PC stuff is a very productive thing to do you got really one of Sony's all-time best now I'm not sure that this sold well on PC but 
I think that's just a great idea for Sony to put something like Spider-Man on PC. I would encourage them to do more of that, especially if you're going to feel like you have to overcharge consumers for a console. I mean, they're talking about raising the console price and games and stuff like that. It's your risk to do that, but I think at the same time, they can make more productive money if they put their stuff on PC. Now, let me say this, putting Sony published games on PC doesn't guarantee you great sales because the appetite for a PC gamer is a lot different than a console gamer. And the reality of the matter is is that PC gamers like multiplayer games and games like Fortnite, you know, even my daughter, I would consider her more of a PC gamer to the effect of her playing her games on phones and tablets. So both my daughters actually. So she's a PC gamer in that way. Again, that game is a lot different than Spider-Man. Again, it depends on your audience. I bought the game. Uh, I enjoyed the game. There's a few things that I guess we can talk about on here with the game. And I'll be reloading it up to the channel and the bit rates a lot higher so it's going to be and look a lot better than my first capture of it but one of the things is is you know when you play a game like spider-man on pc i mean it's it's essentially open source <laughs> code <laughs> from the standpoint of you have to you have to maintenance the graphics and what i have right now which is a 2080 anything lower than that man you're going to be struggling with this game and especially on the ray tracing front the footage that you're going to see when i upload this is using ray tracing but you also notice that the game stutters a lot more with the ray tracing versus when it's just using ssr and see that's that was my fear always with ray tracing, especially on consoles. I was always afraid that it was going to be something tacked on, which this is. This is tacked on. Make no bones about it. And it was going to basically drain all of the performance on the console. But the good thing is, is that they make this to where you can turn it off. And actually, the ray tracing, actually, it performs a lot better on the ray tracing mode than I initially thought so that's good but that's on PlayStation 5 on PC is a totally different thing I do hope that they are able to optimize the game to the point where the ray tracing works better because you can just see it on here and it wasn't as pronounced on my PC and that was because of the VR VR really helped a lot but looking at it on a capture I mean, you can see where the car was really struggling. Without VRR, I mean, it, man, this this game would be in trouble. So I was just surprised about all that. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a V-Sync, motion blur type of guy. I like some of the, the tricks they got nowadays, especially with the OLEDs doing black frame insertion. And I think it looks pretty awesome. But I'm not a guy who like my eyes being tricked. I like looking at stuff natively. <laughs> DLSS, even though I kept it up. 1440p i guess the point is is that overall i say this game is a step up from the ps5 tell me what y'all think about it listen far as settings is concerned you just have to pick <laughs> you have to figure out if you want ray tracing if you just gotta have ray tracing in your settings you have to go all the way and when I say all the way, I mean, you have to turn everything else down. That's how hard it is. And you have to turn everything else down when you use ray tracing. Outside of that, if you turn off the ray tracing, maybe turn this down to 1080p. I got mine at 1440p. But you turn that ray tracing off and then turn the other stuff up, you know, like the especially the textures and stuff. And then you can turn up the, the shadows or whatnot and... I mean, as long as you do that, you're in pretty good hands as far as performance is concerned. What I may do is, is try that PS5 settings that you can select. And I think you can do like ultra performance on that and do like 120 hertz. I was getting 120 just by turning the ray tracing off and essentially you can turn the weather on you know, at least high and turn the textures up. I was still at 120 and 
I think you'll be pretty good. But you have to commit to one or the other. There's no way you're going to be able to do ray tracing and have all the textures and stuff up. I mean, if you do textures on medium, I mean, they essentially look the same as high. I will say that in general, you have to pick either ray tracing or textures, but you can't have both. Anyway, I've gone on too long with this video. So appreciate you coming by. Appreciate you subscribing. Please come back to the channel. This is Al from Transformational Gaming, and may the truth set you free. Later.